One of the most rewarding things in life is to become a father or a mother. It's also one of the scariest things you can do. These fragile little lives are wholly dependent on us as parents, to not only provide the necessities of life, but to raise them as good members of society. But perhaps even scarier is that we get to make decisions about their health, not just for the present, but well into the future. Perhaps one of the most oft asked questions on my YouTube channel is this. Do you think vaccines cause autism? Or people don't even ask, they just accuse us of being irresponsible parents who ruined our kids' lives. I've avoided this question for a long time, hopefully for obvious reasons. It's a very controversial topic. I've also thought a lot about how I could tackle this video. Should I talk into the camera and keep it raw and unedited? Should I show wall-to-wall -wall text of medical and scientific journals and statistics? Instead, I'm going to show you footage of my boys. This is the whole reason people passionately debate about this topic in the first place. People love their children. That is to say, most people love their children. And they want to do what's best for them. My sons mean more than anything in the world to me. And it's for this reason, and the rising generation, that I'm making this video. I want to help. So I've kept you waiting long enough. Here it is. The billion dollar question and answer. Do vaccines cause autism? I don't know. I'm not qualified to tell you whether or not vaccines cause autism, and most likely, neither are you. Now, wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just hold on. Don't smash that dislike button and rage in the comments. Allow me to explain. Firstly, me not being qualified doesn't mean I didn't do research. It just means I haven't personally verified findings in a lab or put blood samples under a microscope. But yes, just so you don't think I'm making an opinion piece blindly, I have done a lot of research on both sides of the argument. But rather than get into the nitty gritty, I'll just leave some links below in the description of medical and scientific journals, studies, and so on, which argue both sides. This video is supposed to be about the simple answer, which I think is currently the most helpful answer, which is, again, I don't 100% know if vaccines cause autism. Though clearly, I'm okay with giving my kids vaccinations based on current knowledge. So yes, I do have an opinion. I'm not saying it's the right opinion for you, but more on that in a bit. Secondly, I don't think you, the viewer, is likely qualified to say vaccinations do or do not cause autism. Sure, you may have hard drives full of findings linking vaccines to autism, multiple tests and multiple journals, charts, bar graphs full of data and statistics, or maybe you belong to the other team and you've got hard drives full of findings disproving that vaccines cause autism. I've seen both sides of the argument and both sides furnish findings. So ask yourself this question, are you a neurobiologist, biochemist, pharmacist, neurologist, scientist, any kind of ist? Are you even a family doctor? I'm wagering that over 95% of you watching this video said no. So already things aren't working quite in your favor when it comes to being qualified. If you did qualify, then please leave a comment below. Yes, just about anyone can become educated, but being an experienced, qualified professional to test findings of this nature is something else. Rather than gaining knowledge via hearsay, which is just about everyone on the internet, professionals gain knowledge firsthand. Qualified professionals run the scientific method for themselves and find methods they can replicate again and again. Other professionals test those findings for validity. Well, that's just rubbish, you might say. I don't need to be credible myself when I can cite sources from credible professionals. What difference does it make if they ultimately end up publishing their findings? Well, first of all, not all professionals agree on the findings. That should be a red flag right there. So not only do you have to qualify to be a professional, you have to be an accurate professional, dead accurate. As the saying goes, it's not the statistics that lie, but the statisticians. Doctors argue with other doctors, scientists argue with scientists, and what's worse, we have people like Jenny McCarthy, Robert De Niro, and Jimmy Kimmel being the basis for many people's opinions. Now having mentioned a lack of consensus, I would argue that most doctors are in favor of vaccinations, but not all. Here's another problem with findings, lab studies, and group tests, regardless of which side of the argument you were on. You are accepting that these studies were done perfectly, without bias, without any degree of corruption or payouts. What's that? Bribing scientists? Hey, scientists gotta eat too, right? Okay, I'm not gonna get into conspiracy theories or anything like that, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. You are also assuming these studies had enough properly vetted test subjects to make the study comprehensive, that there are not any possible errors, also, were you physically present for the proceedings and witnessed with your own eyes that the findings were sound and done accurately? Without knowing with absolute certainty, you become vulnerable to falsify documentation, large corporate greed, bias, or at least cherry-picked data, or even mistakes. 
Now, don't get me wrong. I'm the kind of guy who asks for someone to cite references and verify their claims when they provide me with medical advice, because that's certainly better than some random person stating their opinions on YouTube. You know, people like me, or worse, actors. But having said that I rely on medical references doesn't mean the medical community gets it right all the time. And not just like, oops, we put a decimal in the wrong place. I mean like they have literally killed and mutilated human beings unintentionally and with enough money behind it intentionally. So I'm talking about malpractice. Again, sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it's not. I would say most times it's not. Now at this point you're probably like, oh, get the tinfoil hats out, the aliens are coming for this conspiracy theorist, but just hear me out. When asking if anything is credible or not, one good question to ask is this. Does the source providing the product have a reliable track record? An obvious example of screwing up would be those 1950s commercials where a doctor in a lab coat is recommending Camel cigarettes as the best choice cigarette. Another example is a lesser known one, thalidomide. This is a perfect example of the medical community screwing up, and it wasn't that long ago. We aren't talking about the dark ages when doctors would use leeches or even the 1800s when oral medicine had mercury in it. We are talking about the 20th century, around the 1960s. And they screwed up big time. This drug, I believe, started in Germany, and due to thalidomide, many children were born with birth defects until they removed the drug from store shelves much too late. Many children died shortly after birth. The point is this, if it has happened before, can it happen again? Yes, of course it can. People make mistakes. Does this mean vaccines cause autism and the movie you saw called Vaxxed was right about the CDC cover-up and falsified information and we should never vaccinate children again? Let me just say I saw the movie Vaxxed and as someone who has worked on documentary films, I can tell you it was incredibly one-sided. It was pretty much pure propaganda. Even if they do end up being right about the CDC, that movie had one goal proving to the audience that vaccines are pure evil. I can't remember ever hearing the other side of the argument in that film, and it has been a while since I've seen it, but nothing really comes to mind. This movie has created massive waves across the world, influencing political actors to speak out against vaccines and freaking out everyone to the point where measles and other diseases are coming back because people won't vaccinate their kids. Another problem has surfaced in that many kids who aren't vaccinated still have autism. So that punches a hole in the concept that vaccines are the only culprit for autism. Zooming out a bit, the whole thing seems like a giant witch hunt from angry parents, and we found a pretty good scapegoat, which is vaccines. I'm not saying vaccines don't cause autism, I'm just saying that is public enemy number one. Another consideration is the amazing amount of good vaccines have accomplished in our modern world, eradicating polio in this country as well as many other life-threatening diseases. So a good question to ask is this, even if vaccines do cause autism, is it worth exposing your child to those kinds of diseases? Only you can answer that. And I would like to add here that only you should answer that. I hate how people think there needs to be nitty gritty laws for every little tiny thing. Granted, this is a big issue, the concern for public health and safety, but telling a parent how to parent is a risky prospect. Yes, we can all agree that beating a child black and blue should have interference from Big Brother, AKA Child Protective Services, but this is not the same thing. Some parents become enraged by the non-vaxxers because they are exposing non-vaccinated kids to their children before they are finished with a vaccine schedule, which can take years to complete. However, maybe someone's child is severely allergic to some of the ingredients in vaccines. Maybe a child is at risk for seizures, which some vaccines have caused, and so on. We don't know what we don't know. Other parents are enraged anyone would vaccinate their kids, exposing them to all the so-called toxins and vaccines. But maybe, just maybe, those parents don't want to see their kid in an iron lung from polio or dying from measles or even contracting hepatitis B. In short, let the parents choose and please stop judging when you don't know someone's particular circumstance. I have friends who have vaccinated their kids and I have friends who did not. They all told me their reasoning. They all have valid arguments, if nothing else. So a question a lot of people ask is this. I can understand why Big Pharma would have a lot to gain from discrediting non-vaccinators, but who stands to gain from discrediting vaccines? Well, natural remedy companies, alternative medicine doctors, or people selling snake oil out in the back of their SUVs, people who think marijuana will cure every single disease. A lot of these people demonize the medical industry so they can provide alternatives, sometimes good, sometimes dangerous, and they do it for profit. The very thing they accuse Big Pharma of doing. Everyone is selling something, and it would be naive to think that it's always with good intentions. In conclusion, I know I digressed from my simple answer at the beginning of this video, but I think I needed to provide a little context, and I hope you'll think on it. Unless you are qualified to say vaccines do or do not cause autism, please tread carefully. You could end up endangering a child's life because of how you persuaded someone to believe. 
Also, as all videos do, this one will become outdated. Research continues, and who knows, maybe soon we'll find the missing link to autism. I also didn't cover other topics like oral vaccines and parents who cherry-pick vaccines based on their wishes, but this video has gone on long enough. My hope is that this message will save lives, empower parents to make their own choices, and perhaps absolve some people of the guilt they feel over vaccinating or not vaccinating their children. God bless you and your decisions. And as for me, I'm going to hide in a bunker to avoid the angry mob that will form because of this video.